for today's FT Learn, I want to talk to you guys about how to build choice boards in Google Slides. And I'm going to add that bonus skill of using your Bitmoji to add some interest. This is a really popular skill right now. And I think it would be a lot of fun to add into your choice boards. For the skills that we need to talk about, the first thing that you're going to need to do is you're going to download the Bitmoji app to your smartphone if you don't have a Bitmoji. You'll create an account and design. It'll walk you through the steps. It's very easy. You're then going to add the Bitmoji extension to Google Chrome and you'll sign in with your Bitmoji account. And then you're going to start designing backgrounds of slides using images. Add your Bitmoji, shapes, images, text boxes, etc. And we'll talk about hyperlinking and how to share. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to open up the Google Chrome browser. You have to be in the Chrome browser to be able to use Bitmoji and you are going to search Bitmoji extension. And that's going to take you to Bitmoji inside the Google Chrome store. You'll see it's an extension. And um, over here, I already have it installed, but over here there'll be a place for you to install it. And what happens is once it's installed, it becomes a little icon up here next to the URL bar. So you'll see the little Bitmoji symbol up there. When you're in there, what you're gonna do is you're gonna log in to the Bitmoji account that you've created and then the Bitmoji that you've designed and the clothes that you wear will pop right up. So once my Bitmoji extension is installed, I'm ready to begin building out my Google Slides document. So I'm gonna open up my drive and enter a folder if I'd like to. Go to New, Google Slides, and that will create my document. Now I like to start with a blank background because I'm gonna build a table of contents page on my first slide. So I'm gonna to go to Layout and cha change that to blank. Okay, for this lesson, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a choice board around virtual field trips for farms. So my background needs to be a farm. So I'm gonna to go to Background, Choose Image, Google image search, and then I'm just going to type in farm. When I found a farm that I like, I'm going to select it, press insert, done. And that puts the farm on the background and I can't move it around anymore. It's stuck there, which is exactly what I want. So that's how I insert my background to begin building my scene. For our field trip choice board, students are going to have three steps that they have to complete. They're going to have to watch a video that I've produced they're going to have to choose two field trips to go on and collect images. And then they're going to make a project of the images that they've collected. So here on my table of contents page, I need to direct students to the three areas that I want them to go to. So I'm going to insert a Bitmoji of myself first to welcome them to the field trip. So I'm going to go to the Bitmoji icon at the top, and then I'm going to find um, a pose. And a pose just means that it's just like the body of the Bitmoji without a background or anything like words or anything happening for the most part. So I'm going to choose the wave icon, and I'm just going to press and drag that down onto my slides. So I want to say hi to the students, and I want my Bitmoji to be flipped the other way. So I'm going to right click rotate and flip horizontal. And then I'm going to make it a little smaller. And now I'm going to insert a shape that looks like a call out or a speech bubble. Okay, and I can grab this little yellow diamond and change the direction of that speech bubble if I need to. And then I just tap and type. And I'm gonna add some directions in that tell the students yeah. that they need to click me to find out what to do. I also might add a number so students know to start with that. That's gonna help those digital learners navigate something that looks a little busier. So to insert a number, I'm gonna to go to insert, text box. I'm gonna draw my text box here. And I want this to really stand out. So I am going to change the color 
to red. And if I don't feel like that one stands out enough, I can also resize it to make it a little bit bigger. Okay, so that's gonna mark the first step of the project. Now there are two more parts to this project that students will need to complete. They need to go on the virtual field trip and they also need to create a project. And I'm gonna add objects into this scene so that students can click on them and go to the next spot. So for the first thing, I am going to add an image of a cow. I'm going to go up to insert, image, search the web, and this time when I search, I'm going to search for cow PNG. If I search for PNG, that means that most of those images don't have a background. So when I search for that, I'm going to look for a cow that I like. I'm going to press the cow, press insert, and it will be dropped into the scene, and then I just have to resize. Now I want this cow to be facing the other direction, so I'm going to right click, rotate, flip horizontally. And then I need it to have a speech bubble too. And to make this a little bit easier on myself, I am going to copy these two parts and paste them over here, drag it. And then I'm just going to reorient the speech bubble so it looks like the cow saying it and then edit. Okay, so now I have my table of content slide built out. Now you might do this backwards. You might build all your content slides first and build your table of contents last. It's up to you. I know where I'm going with this because I've planned it out ahead of time. So my table of contents is finished and I'm ready for content slides. To add a content slide, my first one, I'm just gonna go to new slide. I'm gonna change that layout to blank because this is gonna be a video introduction. And as a visual marker for my students, I am going to copy and paste the um, object that they had to press to get to this slide. So that's gonna go on this slide so that they know, and I'm just gonna change the directions inside the speech bubble to instruct them to watch the video. So now I have to add my video, and adding the video is pretty easy. I just have to check my um, privacy settings. So I previously uploaded the video into my folder. Here's my video. I'm going to right click and choose get shareable link. Now it turned my link sharing on, but this is saying that anyone at Fort Thomas can view. I want it to be anybody in the world can view who has the link. So I'm going to right click again, go to share, and then right here where this down arrow is, it says anyone with Fort Thomas can view. I'm going to choose that, choose more, and then I'm going to select the radial dial here next to on anyone with the link and then press save. And done. Now I can go back to my Google Slides, insert video from Google Drive, and this should be right up here in my um, recent area, so I can just click that video and press select. And then students can just watch the video right from here. And this is just a quick video that explains what we're doing and shows some directions and a screen recording with how. I made this in clips in case you have a chance to watch this later. And um, I used clips on my iPhone and then um, I screen recorded from my iPad. So this is my second slide, it's my first content slide. My second content slide is going to be where students choose the field trips that they're going to go on. Now all of my field trips are from um, Google Expeditions for this particular lesson. So I'm going to just press plus and then I am going to copy and paste my cow in. Again, I need that visual cue for students change the directions. Now I went ahead and took screenshots of the possible choices that they might have in Google Expeditions and I just inserted those images into the document. I also want to have some sort of um, headline on here so that students know that they're in the right place and I want it to stand out. So I'm going to insert a shape and I'm just going to put a box and I'm going to draw that box across the top and I'm gonna make it black. So I'm gonna to go to the paint bucket, change it to black, and it's covering up some things. So if I right click, I'm just gonna drop that back to the back by pressing order, send to back. And now I can add in another text box and I wanna make this visually stand out. So I'm gonna change the font color 
by pressing this dot 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 and going down here to where the A is and choosing A. And I've just made a title. Okay, so that's my second content slide. Now I have my content slide basically set up, but what I need to do is I need to add the hyperlinks on these images so that students can get to the um, Google Expeditions that I picked out for them. And what I had to do is for my iPad, email myself the link to those. So I am going to open up my email, pull the link. This one is for exploring farming in Tanzania. I'm going to copy that and then here's the farming in Tanzania choice. Okay, so for the third part of my project and choice board, um, students are going to choose a project to make based on their interest. So typically when I build out one of these, I use the icon from the app that would be a suggestion for what they could do. And these are going to sort of build in the difficulty of use. So the very basic project students could choose to use would be um, to do a pic collage. They might do a clips or something else. Um, the next level might be they would write a book in Book Creator, and the third level would be um, something a little more difficult where they might actually code a story about what they learned. So um, what I'm going to do is create a slide for each of the types of projects that they might do with a little how-to video embedded in it. So for the pic collage one, I've already got a video that they can use and I'm going to go to insert video and I found this video on YouTube. So from the YouTube search bar, I'm just going to paste in the URL for what I found. That's the video tutorial app. I'm going to select that and insert it. And it just pops right in here. And I like doing this because then students don't have to worry about going out to YouTube and it's all embedded right inside my slides. So I'm going to make one of these for each of the different project types that students might do on this choice board. Okay, so once you have made all of the instruction slides that you need for the project choice, it's time to link those up. So all students have to do is um, press on the picture of the app and get to the information that they need or the directions that they need to complete the project. So what they're going to do is you're going to touch on the um, first icon there and you're going to choose a link. And instead of pasting a link in this time, you're just going to go to slides in this presentation. And I put a heading on each of those slides. So all you have to do is match them up. So this one's going to go to pick collage edu. The next one is going to link to Book Creator. The next one is going to link up to Book Creator. And the last one is going to link up to Scratch Junior. So now when a student presses on that image, it takes them right to this slide. Okay, so I'm pretty close to being finished. To help with navigation, I need to go back to my table of contents slide and add the hyperlinks to the slides in the deck. So the first one, I'm going to click on my Bitmoji, choose link, slides in this presentation. And this one is going to link up to slide two. This one is going to link up to slide three. And this one will link up to slide four. Another thing that helps students in the navigation is adding a home link so that students can get back to the table of contents. So I like to do that for pretty much every slide. So I'm going to add a picture of a barn on this one. So I'm going to go to insert image, search the web, put in barn PNG. Once I have that inserted and positioned, I'm going to click on it, choose insert link, slides in the presentation, and it's going to go back to the first slide. Okay, and then once I have that set up, I can just copy and paste it onto my others. You might have to tell students in your directions that they can press that barn to go back to the home page, or you could insert a little direction to that on the first slide the first time they see it so that they know that they're going to go back to the first slide. All right, so now I'm ready to add this to Seesaw. And if I'm going to add it to Seesaw, I'm going to go to File, Publish to the Web, choose Publish, open up your Seesaw class, go to Add, and you could either create an activity out of this or just post it as an announcement. So I'm just going to post it as an announcement. I'm going to post here, choose Link, paste in that link, green check, 
Okay, it's gonna try to add the file. I don't want it to do that. I'm just gonna press continue. I could add some recorded directions. I could add a caption if I wanted. Press the check, assign it to your students, check again, and upload. Now, when I view it, I can press this link and it will open it up as a big web page, basically. And I can press my person, I can press the cow, I can press the chicken. And if I'm on my iPad from this page, I would be able to press these different field trips and open up the field trip. Now, if I'm wanting to use this through Schoology, I'm probably not gonna publish it to the web. I'll probably add in some additional um, slides for students to work on, and I could just assign this as a Google assignment inside of Schoology. So that's two different ways that you could share it with your students. All right, so that's it. That's how you add your Bitmoji into a Google Slides presentation that you could use as a choice board or you could use it really for anything that you create for your students. Um, let me know if you have any questions.